All right, man. Welcome back to WorldWideGiantGrowers.com. Rain Mageddon has come to a halt for a minute. They're calling for a couple days of sunshine here in Michigan. So this gives me a little opportunity on the first day of summer, June 21st, to get my tomatoes in the ground. What I have here is a seven pound, a plant from a seven pound, seven three mentine from Wisconsin. Joe Mentine, my good friend Dan Fleeser from Williamston, Michigan, gave me these plants a couple weeks ago. As I saw due to the cloudy weather and everything, the pumpkins have slowed way down. We're gonna have some future pumpkin videos at Bubba's and E-Rise, don't panic. But however, the last two weeks of very little sun, tons of rain, the plants are at a snail's pace. We're hoping that the switch is gonna flip and the weather's gonna be sunny from here on out. We can, o we can only hope. But here we go. Seven pound tomato plant going in. Now I had a video, I'm gonna link this back to my last video, root bound. Talking about root bound plants. Some people are under the misconception that a root bound plant is where it touches the edges. But no, root bound plants, what they mean by that is when the roots start circling the bottom over and over again and it becomes root bound. So, with that being said, this is the perfect size to put in the ground. What we have here is a trough, eight foot long trough, Mike, show them the trough, built with lattice and screen. The screen on the sides will allow the roots to breathe. Roots love oxygen. So that combined with our veggie dew, I had this shipped down from Morgan's Composting with 77 different minerals. Kind of reminds me of Elvis. We lost Elvis in 77, but that's a whole other subject. Anyways, moving on, what we're going to do, we're going to plant these today while the sun is out, and I'm going to inoculate them. Here's a great product, Great White Mycorrhiza. I know Tim Egan, he's the owner of the company. They used to sponsor me. My biggest watermelon I ever grew, 260 pound watermelon, was grown with Great White. What we're going to do is take this little pepper shaker and we're going to just dust, dust these roots. Blame it all on my roots. She showed up in boots. A little in the hole. Don't be, don't use too much. You don't want to be a moron. You want, or you'll learn your lesson. Don't be a moron. So here we have, we've inoculated the roots. Trichoderma bacillus mycorrhiza. We're going to bury it deep because a tomato plant will root all the way up. Now, I already buried it once in the cup deep because it was kind of the cup was half full when I got it. So now we're going to do that again. Gently pack it down. There's enough moisture in here. I really don't need to water. I pre-watered the hole. I have my little solution here and I pre-watered. If you want, if it makes you feel better, you can throw a little moisture in there to make sure we ignite the mycorrhiza. It really has like three days to come in contact something like two to three days to come in contact with the root so that it can colonize. And then you have 21 days. If you want to test your mycorrhiza, the best way to test it is on your plants. It typically takes 21 days to colonize. So treat some of your seedlings with it, some do without. The reason I say that is I was going to test my mycorrhiza, my root keeper, which has also been added to that water already. We're using the root keeper combined with the great white because mycorrhiza is so fragile. I was told when I went to have my mycorrhiza, it was going to cost like $1,500 to test it with a company out of San Diego. I thought, $1,500? For the love of God, I can test it myself on some seedlings, with and without, and I'll know in three and a half weeks if it's colonized by looking at the roots. And every year I've tested it that way, it's come out good. But just to be safe, I like to use multiple sources of mycorrhiza. I highly recommend it. It's very fragile. It could die in your mailbox if you're in Texas and it's 110 degrees out. It could die in your mailbox before you ever get it to the garden. So beware of that. So there you go. We're planted in the ground. Stay tuned for future videos. What I want to do before we're running out of time here is I want to show you real quickly some of the projects I got going. Here's Bubba's hydroponic pumpkin seedling. This is something I just thought I'd dabble with the other day. I actually, I thought I'm just going to do this just for laughs and giggles. I'm going to say, everybody's telling me, oh, you need to grow a pumpkin hydro, man. You need to grow in hydro. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to mess around with that. So stay tuned for future videos. Videos. We'll talk about the hydro pumpkin. We got worm dew. Check it out, worm dew. I've actually amended the veggie dew here. This whole trough is filled with veggie dew from Morgan's Composting. And I've actually given a little boost 
I was somewhat of a moron and added a little bit of more worm castings. I'm going to sprinkle them around like this and then I'll work them into the soil because the, the worm dew will help feed your microbes. Those are food for the microbes. So there you go. You got weed dew, weed dew, worm dew. Well, for some guys it is weed dew. You got worm dew. Seed starter 101. We're going to come back to Bubba and e -Rice pumpkin patch. We'll be burying vines with Seed Starter 101. So stay tuned for that video. Subscribe to my channel. Click on your notifications and stay tuned for all of our gardening videos. Tomatoes, long gourds. In fact, Mike, let's walk over to long gourds now. I'm going to show them what we got going with the long gourds. We're actually growing in a manufactured home community. Very nice park. And uh, I'm liking the challenge. Here's a trellis I built. I pulled this out of the garbage. I love to recycle. This is a pallet pulled out of the garbage. Went to Home Depot, bought the fence, section of fence. And what we're going to have is the long gourd. If you're familiar with long gourds, the world record is 149 inches grown by Alan Eaton from Canada. What I'm hoping to do in Bubba's giant veggie grow bag from Morgan's Compost, this right here, Show them this, Mike. A yard and a half of 301, if that's possible. That's okay, it's written on the side of the bag. That's a yard and a half of Morgan's 301, which is their veggie dew. The veggie dew has all your nutrients already added into it. It's good for six to eight weeks. You don't need to fertilize, you simply water the plants. So we're gonna use that, and in six weeks, I will start micro feeding the plants. This is my long gourd. All right, here's the long gourd. I've already cut, cut the container open. Can you get a shot of those roots? Blame it all on her roots. She showed up in boots and ruined your blue ribbon affair. All right, so now you all know why I don't sing for a living. Here we go, the 143 Vanda Weiland, the, the mother of the world record, 149 Eaton, is going in the ground today. It is not root bound, but it's got some nice roots. I don't have my pepper shaker here, but I have added a dash of root keeper, my root inoculant, to this water, along with a little bit of Mark Special Tea, just a pinch. We will water that in. And the nice thing about the powders is you can actually add more root keeper tomorrow. You can come back tomorrow or the next day and you can water it in. Not, vine burying is not the only way to inoculate. We're going to stick this down in the ground. We're going to backfill. All right, get her all in here. And what I'm gonna do, now all we're supposed to have to do is water, with this veggie dew compost, is water for the next six weeks. And what I'll do, Bubba's read and feed, I always tell you guys, read and feed your plants. I will monitor the plant as a gardener of over 25 years now. Well, I've been gardening more than that. I've been gardening since I was 12. But anyways, I know how to read a plant. If it needs nitrogen, I'll be able to tell. When it starts needing nitrogen looks needy i will start using some of mark's mixes i'll use some other products um, i'm not married to mark's mixes anymore as you all know mark's mixes is on the way out and next year we'll be using different products but here you go i want to thank you all for using my products we'll use mark's special tea which the big ingredient here is the kelp extract kelp extract contains amino acids which makes calcium mobile from leaf to fruit so once this long gourd climbs up this trellis and I pollinate a fruit, this should be about August, come back and see my future videos. That's going to be hanging from there. We'll start using kelp extract products. We probably even have some from Dairy Dew that, Dairy Dew that we will use. And we'll start making the calcium go from leaf to fruit, and we'll see the results. So join us at WorldwideGiantGrowers.com for Bubba's Giant Grow Bag, world record attempt to grow a new state record long gourd. I hold the state record now at 138 inches. Let's see if I can beat my own state record and possibly a world record. Join us. Talk to you soon.